Hey guys, it's Wayne Santos, one of the editors here at CGM, and this week's sound off is a very disappointed shaking of the finger to Sega and uh, GameStop, also known as EP Games in Canada. Now, uh, this week we got a bit of um, like you know a, a sort of a good news, bad news scenario. Um, the good news is there's actually some interesting downloadable content that's going to be coming to Alien Isolation, which is the you know single Alien game that's coming in October. Now the DLC, there's actually two pieces. Um, one is called Crew Expendable, and this will come to anybody that pre-orders the game. This one reunites pretty much the entire cast of the first Alien movie, um, except for Ian Holmes that, you know, it's like um, played uh, Ash. Uh, and it, it's basically what happens after the uh, really oogie, icky um, first, you know, it's like murder of one of the crew when the alien, you know, finally starts his rampage. So that's okay. Um, the bad news, though, is that there is a um, second piece of DLC, and um, this one is entitled Last Survivor, and this one takes place when Ripley is setting the Nostromo on self destruct and is trying to get out of the ship. And um, that also sounds extremely great, and people would be really excited about that, except that that particular DLC is only available to people that pre-order specifically from GameStop slash EB Games. It's like, okay, I understand the point of this, but I would just like to say that there is a fine line between incentive and punishment. And in uh, some regards, what Sega is doing in cooperation with EB slash GameStop that really borders along the lines of punishment. I mean, it's like you want to give people a reason to get your game, but you do not want to punish them for like, you know, not buying it at a certain place. Um, perhaps even more important than that, everybody knows that this kind of DLC is not exclusive forever and ever. You know, it's like eventually when enough time passes, it is going to be made either available for purchase at a later date or it might simply be included with the inevitable game of the year edition if the game itself sells pretty well. Which is, you know, it's like telling people, you know, it's especially if for whatever reason they've really got something against buying stuff from GameStop or EB Games, don't buy this game now. You know, it's like, just wait. Wait until the DLC becomes available or wait a year or two down the line and get the game of the year edition. This is not something that Sega actually wants to have happen to the game. You know, it's like, the sales within the first few days of a game, within the first week really, are usually the most important sales for the average game. We're not talking about Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto or any of those other huge blockbusters. We're talking about the rest of the games that usually tend to follow normal sales statistics. There's absolutely no guarantee that Alien Isolation is going to be one of those special exceptional games that just continues to sell and sell and sell. It's safer to assume that it's going to sell about as reasonably well as other games and to punish people for not buying it at the right store really discourages them from deciding, okay, you know, it's like, I want my value for money and I want that DLC, but I'm not getting that at that store. So maybe you don't need my money right now. You know, it's like, maybe I will just wait. Um, so Sega you know, like, uh, and to GameStop, it's like, I understand why these things are done. Incentives are a way to get people over to certain places. You know, it's like they, they have incentives as well for, you know, it's like online purchases, but this particular kind of DLC is something that everybody really, really wants. It's not a nicety or a nice to have little extra like a cosmetic upgrade or, you know, some little thing that doesn't affect gameplay. This is actual content that people would really, really like and you're saying no to them. And don't be too surprised if you get some kind of pushback as a result of that. So to Sega and to GameStop, I would say it's probably already too late for this particular game. You guys are committed to this path. But in future, I really suggest that you weigh the pros and cons and look at the possible consequences of this because you could have a lot of unhappy gamers on your hands. See ya.